Greetings and blessings to you all at this time of sacred equinox. I hope that this equinox, this point of balance for the earth and its seasons, brings us all an opportunity to be collectively present in time and space before we begin tumbling toward the next seasonal shift, either springing into summer here in the north or falling from autumn into winter for those in the southern hemisphere. The equinox is a time when the Earth's axis is neither tilting away from nor toward the Sun. Our axial tilt is at zero degrees, and the center of the Sun is above the horizon for at least 12 hours each day. For all of us, the equinox is a point in time and space when the tilt of the Earth has come to center, and I can't help but imagine the entire planet taking a deep collective breath at this moment and pausing for just a millisecond before exhaling and beginning its tilt in the other direction. You've probably noticed this pause point yourself in your own breathing. After you inhale and notice the pause and exhale, inhale, a pause, and exhale. Reminds me of that moment when playing on a swing, you've gone out as far as you can, and there's that moment of seeming weightlessness before gravity pulls you back down. Or moments when I'm anticipating a big surprise or something exciting is about to happen, and I've held my breath without noticing it, and then exhale in a moment of revelation. In these pauses, there is both stillness and possibility. Looking ahead to what awaits us, either summer or winter, how is it that we find and cultivate the courage necessary to continue, to plant something new, perhaps in the face of previous tragedy, or to prepare for the impending cold and darkness of winter. Nature offers the equinox as a guide, a beautiful balancing point of possibility. This balancing point is accessible to us in this pause between breaths, and the meditative states pointed to by many contemplative and mystic traditions. The Radiant Sutras speak of this point as a dancing ground, a place where opposites intermingle and play, where we can feel into them and choose which direction to move toward. But in which direction should we move? Rather than thinking of courage as having something to do with strength and force, a way of thinking I often revert to, it is important to see courage as arising from one's heart, just as the word courage arises from the old French word for heart. Someone rushing into battle may appear courageous on the surface, but if their motivation is from fear or anger, their action may not be courageous, but is simply aggressive or misinformed. When I think of heartfelt courage, I think of times when a parent steps out of the door when the winter wind is blowing, knowing that the buses aren't running today because of the weather, and yet food still needs to get on the table. Or I think of a worker who speaks out to their boss about the safety of the construction site after seeing the possible harm that could be caused to his colleagues, even though he knows the boss is blatantly violating safety regulations. Or I think of the soldier on the battlefield who could rush to the helicopter and leave right now or go back and retrieve a wounded colleague or civilian. These decisions may seem like obvious choices, but my sense is that in any situation where we feel resistance, there is an inner conversation, an inner listening, as to whether or not to stay inside, or go to work, to speak out, or remain silent, to stay safe, or step into your heartfelt conviction. And while we may not realize it, this inner conversation happens best in a place of silence and inner stillness. One of the easiest places for me to find the silence is in the shower. How many of you have had an idea take shape or a plan fall into place while just standing under the cascade of warm water in the bathtub? Or how many of you have an exercise routine like running or yoga or simply a daily walk and find that similarly ideas crystallize that may not have been clear before? Both of these are examples of spaces that invite inner silence and stillness for us to hear ourselves, 
to listen to our heart without the endless to-do lists and beliefs or the endless train of anxieties from our thoughts and emotions. In the Zen order that I participate in, we practice, a meditation, we practice meditation as a way to touch our clear, deep heart mind. And by practicing, well, by practice, I mean sitting still, breathing, and watching thoughts as they rise and fall away. We develop a fitness for going into stillness in order to listen to our heart in challenging times. And as we develop this fitness, we begin to recognize that this source of compassion and courage is always available to us when the constant parade of thoughts comes and goes. Turning to our clear, deep heart-mind lets us discern which thoughts to act on, but we have to listen and pay attention. Would you be willing to practice with me now, like I did earlier, just inhaling, pausing, and then exhaling while noticing thoughts that arise? We won't try to do anything like counting or clearing the mind of all thoughts, just breathing and noticing. So, inhale, notice, exhale, inhale, notice, exhale. This simple practice of breathing with awareness can be a tool for you to use to listen to your heart and find the courage in the balance of the breath. So, during this time of axial alignment, may you discover the heartfelt courage you need to step into the blossoming of spring or the cold of winter. Either way, I hope that this coming season is full of warmth in the knowing that you are part of a larger whole, a collection of people riding this planet around a star, each one with a beating, breathing, loving 